Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Let's take a look at a problem of a spring hanging from the ceiling and you attach a mass to it. All right, so let's think about this for a second. If I have a spring attached to the ceiling, it's going to have some natural rest length. And now when I attach a mass to it, we know what's gonna happen. It's gonna stretch out, okay? And initially, it's going to stretch out all the way down to there. And then it's going to spring back up to its original location, right there. And then it's gonna go up and down a few times. And as it goes up and down, eventually it's gonna lose energy to air resistance and it will finally come to an equilibrium position, which is right there. Okay, so this is the equilibrium position. This is the maximum stretch. All right, so let's say we are given the first part of the problem. Let's say we are given this height, h, and we need to determine something about, say, the spring constant, k. How do I deal with that? Well, let's think about this box, right? We have a box sitting right there. We're about to attach it to the spring and let the whole thing fall. And let's give you a number for the mass of the box. We'll say that, that max, the mass of the box is 0 0.476 kilograms. And now we also give you the height h that it drops, and we'll say that that height h is 0 0.149 meters. And let's ask the question, what's the spring constant? All right, how do we deal with that in this first part? Well, one way that we can do it is simply conservation of energy. The energy initially has to be equal to the energy, energy in the final picture. If this is the initial and that's the final, what do we have for initial? We have mgh. What do we have for final? Well, at the bottom of its motion, it's got a velocity of zero, so there's no kinetic energy. There is no potential energy anymore if we set our y equals zero to that distance. And the only energy it has is the stretch of that spring. And so we can say 1 half k x squared, but how far does it stretch? It stretches a distance h. And now look at this. We can solve this last equation for k. What do we get? We get k equals, we multiply across by 2, and we get 2mg and then we had an h, but we're going to divide by an h squared, and so we get an h in the denominator. And if you plug in those numbers, you should get 62.6 newtons per meter. Now, how does this jive with this business of equilibrium position? If we drop a distance h, then this position right here is halfway between. We went down HO2 from it, we went up H over 2 from it. And so the equilibrium position is directly at H over 2. So would we get the same answer for K if instead we solved the force equation, let's take a look. When it finally comes to equilibrium, we can draw a free body diagram right here. And we know that mg down has to be equal to kx going up. But in this case, the stretch is h over 2. And so now if I set those equal, some of the forces have to be zero, what do we have? We have kh over 2 minus mg equals zero. 
and look, I can solve this equation now for k, and I get k equals 2mg over h, which is exactly what we did over there. Okay. All right, hopefully that's clear. Uh, if not, come see me in my office. Cheers.